So, now you have a look at this, right? Come back to your sigma notation, right? What this is telling you is, when you expand this whole thing, right? And I want to know just about the x of the two n's in there, okay? When you expand this whole thing, you have to add up a bunch of those, okay? There are going to be, there's going to be this one, and then the next one, and then the next one, and so on. So I want you to have a look in this series, right? Can you see for k equals zero, right? This is the first one, I have to do all of them, okay? For k equals zero, I'm going to get da 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 da, da all these terms, but I'm only interested in one of them. And you have to look carefully. It's not obvious right away which one it is, okay? Which one of them will have an x to the 2n in the term? Have a look, have a look. When k equals zero. Yeah, ready. It's the kth term. The kth term? For, for k equals zero, right, in this series, let me, let me actually start to read this off to you, right? This is going to be 2nc0 times 2 to the 2n minus 0 times x to the 2n minus 0. Oh, wait, I got it. Okay, I'm going to get to the kth term eventually. This term for k equals 0, this term here will have an x to the 2n in it. You see that? Okay, I'm going to write that down in a second. Okay, but before I do, I want to think logically before I have all my working there. Well, what happens for the next one? For k equals 1, okay? Now, where will the x to the 2n term be? And I can tell you right now, it's not going to be this term, is it? Right? This will not have a power of x to the 2n. When I put in k equals 1, it's like, oh, my power will be something else. I don't know what it'll be, but it won't be x to the 2n. Right? In fact, you need this one. Do you see that? When I put k equals 1 into this whole thing, I have a whole bunch of terms, but the only one I'm interested in is that one. Because k equals 1 there will leave me with just that x to the 2n. Does that make sense? Okay. So for each value of k, I need to pick out which one of the terms I want. Okay. So therefore, to try and boil this down, all right, um, I'm going to do, I'm not going to draw lines for it, but I basically I'm going to draw up some tables of values here. So here's what I'm going to have underneath that. I just know I'm not going to have enough space on the right-hand side. Okay. What I want to compare is... A value of k, and then I want to compare it to the coefficient of x to the 2n that I get out of this thing. Okay? Take a breath. For k equals 0. Remember, what I'm doing is this, right? Because I'm looking for the coefficient of x to the 2n in this, because that will give me the coefficient of x to the 2n in this, which I happen to know is that. <laughs> How's your logic going, okay? So, therefore, I have to actually have this whole thing in there, right? So for k equals 0, the first thing that I write down is what's in the sig notation. It's 2n c0. It's, it's from there. Do you see that? In fact, I'm going to underline it with the same color so that you get where this is coming from. That guy there, he appears here, okay? And then I have to work out this thing and you guys told me for k equals 0, this is the term that I care about. The rest of them are irrelevant. Okay? So I'm going to write down the bits of that that correspond to k equals 0. So I'm going to have, let's have a look. Um, 2n minus k, c0. 2 to the 2n minus 0. Do you see where I got that from? Okay, let me underline it. There it is. And I don't need to write that there's x to the 2n minus 0 there because I'm just talking about the coefficient, right? So I've already accounted for the fact that it's going to have an x to the 2n. Okay, I've got one of them. Let's write down the next one, okay? For k equals 1, again, I return to the sigma notation and there's a 2nck in there. So I've got 2nck. Okay, that comes from the green bit again. And then I've got to deal with this guy, and you told me, okay, it's the next number along, it's the next term along, I should say, that's going to give me that x to the 2n for k equals 1, okay? So I'm going to say, all right, now what have I got? 2n minus 1, right? Yeah. Here, minus 1. C1 to the power of 2 to the 2n, okay? Careful, there's a new power there, isn't there? This was part of our pattern that changed as we went along. Uh, the power is no longer 2 to the 2n minus k. The power of 2 is 2 to the 2n minus 2, minus 1, minus 1. Yep, so I'm going to write that down. In fact, I'm even going to write minus 1, minus 1. Okay, I'll simplify all this out in a minute. 
I'm going to do one more and then I can get to the general term. So for k equals 2, come back to the sigma notation. It's got this green bit here. And then I get to the red part, the big expansion that they used an identity for. Um, 2n minus 2, c2. Okay, do you see why I had to write down that next one? Right, because I'm going to talk about it now. This for k equals 2, this for k equals 2, do you see this is the term I'm interested in now? Because the 2 there and the 2 there will cancel? Yeah. So have a look at what's happening here. What's the power of 2? It's 2n minus 2 minus 2. Okay, you see that? 2n minus 2 minus 2. Dot, dot, dot. Now, think, where's this thing going to end? Where am I going to end this thing? When k is 2n minus k squared. When k is 2n minus k Yeah, when k is 2n minus k When... <laughs> which k are we talking about, okay? So what I've, what I've written here is having a look at... So can you look at this? Yes. Your, that line, the last one, that should be an x, should Yes, that should be an x. So what's happening here? <laughs> okay, alright. I want you to look carefully at this for a second. Have a look at it. What value of n, sorry, what value of k would make sense to be the last thing? And this is not, not immediately obvious, okay? Where would you go up to for here for this to be meaningful, okay? Now let me give you an example of something which seems like it would make sense, but actually doesn't, okay? Think about what would happen for k equals 2n. Just think about it for a second. k equals 2n seems like a reasonable thing to go for because like you've got powers of 2n. I think that should be my last term, right? I think. But if you put 2n in to wherever you see k, what happens? Well, what happens here? What's this thing going to be? You don't have to go any further than that. This is going to be Seriously. naught choose naught. Okay, something's gone wrong here, right? This is not right. This shouldn't go all the way up to um, 0c0. That's nonsensical. Where's the last term? What's usually the last term on the end of Pascal's triangle on any row? It should be ncn, right? Or, or 2nc, 2n, or whatever. These two things should be the same, right? I think k equals n is the most suitable term to end on, okay? So I'm going to write this down. The nth term. Nth term. <laughs> okay? All I want is a general term, right? So the general term, I can write down with n's. And have a think about where, where this thing, where, where is it? Where, where this thing actually ends, right? Have a look. See how it ends at zero? See how it ends at zero? Have a look at what power you'd have to get up to to make that zero, right? Oh, do you see? Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in and you'll see what I get out of this. Okay. Uh, when I do n, I'm gonna get, okay, look. What does this bit become? 2n, n. 2n minus n, n. 2 to the? Yeah, look, look, look. So he goes 2n minus k, 2n minus k minus 1. These are dropping down by... Careful, careful. Have a look. They're dropping down by 2, right? Look, do you see my pattern? Look at my pattern. This is why I, had, I needed this pattern so desperately, right? It went from 2n to 2n minus 2, 2n minus 4. Because look, see we're doing two things, right? This thing is going up one at a time. But so is this. They're both going up one at a time, which means in the end you go two at a time. Does that make sense? So you've gone 2n, 2n minus 2, 2n minus 4. This is to the 2n minus, minus n minus n, which is 2n. Does that make sense? That's the power of x. You see, remember, remember again, which power of x do I want? I want x to the 2n. The value of k that will give me x to the 2n here, right here, is 4n take away 2n. I want that to be n. Okay. So do you see now my argument for why my last value is k equals n? Okay, do you see where I've gone? Yeah. But wouldn't the last value, like shouldn't the last value be the row of Pascal's triangle that it is? Like, yeah. Here's the tricky thing. The row of Pascal's triangle that you're on depends on the value of k, right? Depends on the value of k. So you're actually looking at different rows. You're adding up a whole bunch of different rows, okay? All right, it's all right. Just 
file it away for a second. Let me see if I can complete this out and if the logic will come together for you. Okay. So therefore, these are all of the coefficients you'll come out the front of x to the 2n based on this guy, right? But I know that they should all be equal to this, right? Oh, there's a 2 there. Yeah, does that make sense? That's the coefficient that I got in part 1. Okay. So this is equal to, I've got to add up all these things now. Okay, so I've got, I've got this guy. That's the first one I'm doing. I can simplify some numbers now. Um, 2 to the 2n plus the next one. Um, plus the next one. And once I get to my third one, then I can say, all right, what about the last one? Okay, so have a look here. You can see I'm going to get 2 n m n m 2 to the 0. Okay. But look, look, are we there yet? Have a look finally at the result we're trying to prove. Okay, because I finally have this thing, which is supposed to be on the left-hand side, and I've got something I'm supposed to get on the right-hand side. Does it fit what I want? Look at, look at the sigma notation. Okay. They have said, add up from what to what? And equals zero to n. Aha! Another clue that I needed to end on n, not on 2n. Okay? The thing I'm adding up, there are, I go from zero all the way up to n. Okay? That's how many of these things I'm going to get. Um, oh, okay, what's the format of this thing? How does it change as you progress from one turn to the next? Well, the top of that NCR thing is always 2n, and then this just goes 0, 1, 2, n, right? So that's going to be, okay? Then you have a look at these guys. All right, the top values in the second NCR notation, the top values keep on changing, don't they? Right? It's 2n take away 0, 2n take away 1, 2n take away 2. It's 2n take away whatever your particular value is right now. And then you also choose that particular value. And then lastly, your power of 2. 2 to the power of, okay? The 2n always stays the same. 2n, 2n minus 2, 2n minus 4. This is 2n take away the multiples of 2, depending on whichever multiple you are on right now. Okay?